Today we're talking about online circuit simulators. Why build it when you can just sim it? Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about online circuit simulators. And there are quite a number of them out there. Come a long way from the old days of spice. What we're getting now is pretty much real time. And the one I'm going to take a look at today is Multisim from National Instruments. It's pretty easy to use and it's free. What's great about a circuit simulator is that you can play with any kind of design you have in your head see if it works and not worry about letting the smoke out so let's say just for super simple you've got yourself an LED okay and you've got yourself a 12 volt battery now you know that if you just hook that up you're going to blow up the LED so you know you need a resistor but you don't know what value resistor you need this is where you can really get some nice use out of a circuit now we're going to look at some other circuits that are more in depth than this but this is just something to begin with okay So we have our LED, we have a resistor, and we have our battery. So all we have to do is, see how it looks, turns into a spool of wire? We'll just connect them up here. Just like this. Now this particular one likes to have a ground source in there, or it gets angry, so we'll just put a ground in there. All right. So what we can do now is we can put in some meters, basically. So we can say, here's the voltage off our battery. Here's the voltage after the LED but what we want to know is the current going into the LED so we'll put our meters up there we'll hit the play button and we'll start simulating and now we can see we have 12 volts coming out of our battery we're only dropping less than a volt here and we're putting 51 milliamps, which is too much for an LED. We want to bias it at about 15 to 20 milliamps. So what we can do is we can click here and get our slider and just bring it up. And once we get that current right about where we want it, say 15 milliamps now we know we need a 745 ohm resistor we can also take a look at our graph here it tells you what each one is voltage voltage current we can do a split and you can see how they work so this is a really simple example of something like this now here is another example this is a non-inverting op amp you see we have our AC voltage source 1 volt at 1 kilohertz coming into our non-inverting input 
we have our feedback resistor coming in here negative feedback going through that voltage divider to ground we're just using 1k resistors here 1 volt and we can run the sim I understand that's kind of hard to see what's going on so if we go to split screen well now we can see the blue line that's our input voltage and the green line is our output voltage from the op amp and again if we come over here we can change the value of that resistor and control our amplification pretty cool right this gives you ideas of how you can set up your circuits to get what you want out of them and it doesn't take any components and it doesn't take any time. Let's take a look at another example. Here's an inverting op amp. See again we have one volt, one kilohertz coming in through this dropper here, 300 ohms going into our inverting input. We have our negative feedback resistor here at 1K coming back and our non-inverting input is set for ground we'll run the simulation and take a look at it and then you see there is our our initial voltage coming in that's our green and then the blue is our amplification and as you can see the signal is inverted we can even mess around with the phase That's the frequency. Thought we could do the phase. Can we do the phase? Yeah, we can do the phase. So there you go. Really useful for playing around and trying to learn what your circuit is going to do. And for just mapping out your circuits. Now here is a sine wave to square wave converter right here we have our AC source 5 volts 1 kilohertz and we're going through a comparator over here we have our load and then we have our DC source up here so if we simulate this circuit let's go split so you guys can see what's going on there is our initial sine wave over here that's the uh, the green voltage then we have from this first node we have our other sine wave which has been uh, cut back a little bit then you come over here to number three which is the blue that's our negative and then finally we come to the purple which is our square wave so what's what's happening here is the comparator is taking a look and it's seeing when the voltage is above zero we're getting a high signal digital high basically and when it's low we're getting a low so we're getting on off on off it's taking our analog signal and making it digital It's basically a simple digital or analog to digital converter So this is something that you can do anytime you like. Like I said, this is free. You can come up here, sign up, create a new file. And just throw some stuff down, whatever you want. We can take a look here through some of the components. We have AC voltage, current, clock, voltage, clock, current, uh, triangular voltage, step current, DC current, chirp, thermal noise, three-phase delta. We have resistors, capacitors, inductors, potentiometer, fuse, transformer. We've got op amps, comparators, 
five 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 timer beautiful let's set up a simple uh, five 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 a stable multi vibrator get ourselves a nice LED we'll get a DC voltage source set it for about six volts we'll get our current limiting resistor over here set that for about come on close enough I was going for 330 but that'll work out just fine okay so we need a ground Let me throw that down there we're gonna need a couple more resistors and we're gonna need a capacitor line these up here and connect our battery positive to VCC we'll also connect our reset high And this also goes to VCC. Move this out of the way here. This one comes down to pin 7, which is discharge. And this guy needs to go to our trigger, which is pin 2. Kind of hard to. Oh, no, I don't. Stop doing that. Yeah, let's see how I can get that in there. So this has to go to trigger. Then we need to connect our threshold to our trigger. We're almost. All right, let's get our capacitors in line. capacitor we can connect up our grounds And we connect our output to the LED. And the cathode to our resistor. And that goes to there. And if I did everything right, we should get a blinking light. There you go. 
And if we take a look on the split screen, well, let's put a uh, let's put a voltage over here. So it gives us something to watch. And there you can see our square wave. And of course we can come over here and we can play. We can take our one microfarad capacitor and make it a 10. And see what effect that has. You can see how it has changed our timing considerably. We can do the same thing by playing with our resistor values, which change the charge and discharge cycle. So let me stop that and we'll rerun it here. And there you can see. Very cool. So, circuit simulators. They're fun to play with, they're educational, and you don't blow up any components. Pick one, play with it, learn a little, have a little fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and big thanks to you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. We're at 83,000 subscribers. We're going to make 100,000 this year. And then we're going to do something big. I don't know what. Give me ideas. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. Dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.